Hey guys, Tom Sherman here. Hope you're doing great. Hey, so one of the things that I've been really focused on in the last, uh, oh gosh, for most of my career, but specifically the last eight to 10 years, is financial literacy. And, you know, one of the things I've noticed um, is that our children coming out of, out of high school are completely ill-prepared for financial decisions moving into, into adult life. You know, we used to have things like home ec classes and we'd, you know, talk about how to prepare for a house, etc. Well, those things are all gone now. So if a, if a child is not getting training from their parents, what ends up, and, and I'm talking about specifically financial training, what ends up happening is they're entering the world and honestly they're starting to make some decisions that, that could have really long-term negative impacts on their financial world. So today I want to talk about the three things that we encourage every parent to teach their children as they're preparing for adulthood, specifically from an economic perspective. Of course, there's a lot of other things uh, that you need to be teaching your kids, but all we're going to be talking about today is things having to do with money. I'm specifically going to be looking at it from the perspective of when you buy a home, what is it that an underwriter is going to look at? that will help the client actually qualify for a mortgage. And those things are the very things that a, that a child needs to be focusing on. So the first thing we're going to look at is a child needs to understand how credit works and the value of credit long term, and obviously how to not get into trouble with credit. So one of the things that I encourage parents to do is start talking to their kids early on about about debt, about credit, what it really means, what are, what are some of the drawbacks of that debt, how can it hurt you? You know, the reality is if someone lends you money and you don't pay that debt back, it definitely will negatively impact your credit score, which will impact your ability to borrow money into the future. So I encourage parents to talk to their kids about debt. The obvious uh, goal is, is you want as little debt as you possibly can have. But you definitely want to be able to have those credit scores, and that only comes when you actually borrow money. So you want to have a good balance there. Again, it starts with talking to your parent or talking to your kids about debt, the good and the bad of it, and then helping under helping them understand when they should use debt and how they should use debt. One of the things that I like to do is if you've got a credit card that that you obviously pay on time, you got to make sure you as a parent have good credit. Go ahead and add your kids as an authorized user on that account. What will happen is that will start improving their credit score. That also gives you an opportunity to, to help them start developing a, a credit profile. Now, the key to that is if you've got bad credit on that credit card, you're passing your credit, uh, bad credit onto your child. So you want to make sure that whatever you do, it's, it's a, a good, good account. The second thing I encourage you to do is get your, get your child, get your son or daughter, a debit card that is a secured credit card, um, you know, either a debit card that is a secured credit card or an actual secured credit card, and get it while they're still living at home so that you can help monitor it, you can help them use that account and uh, not get in trouble with it. A secured credit card is going to be secured by money in their bank account, so they, they won't be able to get in, into a whole lot of trouble with it. You still want to watch them, make sure they're making their payments, etc. So credit's the first thing you really want to, want to help them work on. The second thing that we're going to really look at is capacity. And, you know, a better word for capacity is budget. We need to help our kids understand what a budget is. Basically, what are their inflows and what are their outflows? And I encourage you, as soon as your kids actually understand the concept of income and expense, at that moment is when you start talking to them about budget. It can be as, as little as five or six years old when you're giving them, you know, a few pennies and helping them manage where does that money go. You want to help them understand if you have money coming in and you have money going out, that's what a budget is. The goal is to make sure that there's less money going out than is coming in. So one of the things that we did with our kids early on is we helped them uh, with, with budgeting where we would actually give them money to read books. So we were, we were kind of picking the books that they could read, which were obviously educational. And then we would use those funds for certain things. So we would give, give money for reading books, and then we would talk to our, our daughter about getting her hair highlighted and what that actually cost. And so it gave her an opportunity to see money coming in. She was earning that by reading a book and then money going out. And what we noticed is she started changing her financial decisions 
based upon what she felt was was really most necessary for her. So again, helping them understand budgets. As they get older and you start think, talking about things like gas for their car or insurance for their car or a car in general, uh, preparing for college, etc., those numbers start getting bigger. But the key is to help the, help the child understand that if they spend more money than, than they're bringing in, they're going to go into debt. And we don't, we don't want that to happen. It's also really important at that point to talk to them about what is important in a budget. We look at three specific things. Number one, with a budget, I'm going to look at your giving, right? So I'm, I'm really big on making sure that, that whatever you earn, you're giving some of that back to, to those less fortunate. Number two, we talk about saving. And, you know, for me, savings is really just paying yourself. That's, that's kind of when you got money coming in, you, you give some way and you save some, you pay yourself. The third bucket that we look at is how much of their money is actually being consumed, how much of their money is actually being spent. And, you know, we get into all kinds of conversations about, you know, is that money being spent on investments? Is that mean money being spent on, you know, perishable things that are just going to go away? Or is that money being uh, spent just on lifestyle? So we talk about those three areas, giving, saving, and spending. The fourth thing that we're going to look at is cash. And that's a, that's a really big thing as your kids are, are uh, getting older into adulthood, are they saving money? Are they putting money away for, you know, a little bit of a slowdown in the market or a little bit of slowdown in their job or a little bit of, you know, fill in the blank, you know, life happens and all of a sudden you need some cash reserves. So we help our kids understand the value of cash. You know, as we look at all of these things, one of the things that uh, is really important to me, and again, this really goes into understanding cash and debt. But one of the things that I've noticed, and I'm, I'm very particular about it, is the massive increase in student debt that we're seeing in our country today. And I'm going to encourage you, as you're walking through this conversation with your kids and you're talking to them about their credit and you're talking to them about budgets and their, you know, their capacity and you're talking to them about savings, I'm going to encourage you to talk to them also about the cost of education. You know, sometimes we think that education is just a right. You know, no matter what it costs, they, they get a get an education. I'm going to encourage you to, to talk to your kids about what their potential earnings are when they come out of college and what that degree actually is costing them. And, you know, sometimes I think what you're going to find is that our students, our kids, if we give them the opportunity to really evaluate, hey, I'm spending X amount of money to get X type of job. What you'll find is that a lot of times they're going to say, hey, that really doesn't make sense to spend that much money to get that type of job. What we're going to see when we teach our kids and help them understand that and they start making better decisions, what we're going to see is, is those decisions may not be what we agree with, but it'll definitely help them uh, get to a better place in their financial future. So thanks so much for taking some time to listen to this. And uh, again, look at those, uh, those three different areas as you're teaching your kids. And if you have any questions, give me a call. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.